I'm going to explain uh, today very important part about the atomic structure. Children actually many terms were made to assign structure of atoms and uh, the first was the plum pudding model. Plum pudding model, plum pudding model and this model was developed by J.J. Thompson. It was given by J.J. Thompson and this model is basically non-nuclear model, no nucleus. So it is, it is a non-nuclear, non-nuclear model. That atom has not any central portion. There is no nucleus, no central portion. And according to this compounding model, it can be ball. It can be ball-like structure, which is positively charged. Positively charged ball. Positively charged sphere. It is positively charged. Positive charge sphere and at the some places electrons or negatively charged particles were scattered. So negatively charged particles. So this is the simplest approach to the atomic structure. This is Thomson's atomic model or plum pudding atomic model. And he said that atom is a positively charged ball and at the some places negatively charged particles are present. And this is the uh, Thomson's atomic model. So children, uh, many attempts were made and so after plum pudding, there was scientist, there was scientist named Rutherford. So Rutherford performed Ernest Rutherford, E. Rutherford, Ernest. Ernest Rutherford, he performed a scattering experiment, a scattering experiment. He performed a scattering experiment. You know, scattering means to uh, deviate away from the main point. So Rutherford was the very important person to do some more concrete about the atomic structure. And for this, he had taken a lead law. Lead, you know, lead is a metal. And so there is the lead law. This is lead piece. And there was hole was made. This hole was having polonium. Polonium is radioactive metal and it emits the alpha rays. Alpha rays are nothing but the positively charged nucleus of helium. So alpha rays emits alpha. This polonium emits pure polonium and polonium emits alpha rays. Alpha rays. Alpha rays are nothing but the uh, helium nucleus having two unit positive charge. So alpha rays are helium nucleus having two unit positive charge. Now so this is alpha ray beam. He put lead plate, lead slit. Slit means any thick or opaque structure having a small hole. So a small hole was there in the lead. 
so the question is here lead is taken here lead is taken so children simply lead has been taken because lead has capacity to absorb all the rays which are in visible all the rays alpha rays beta rays gamma rays lead has this capacity it is highly stable metal now in front of this so this lead plate was lead slip was taken to concentrate the alpha ray in the i b so this is alpha ray beam alpha ray high beam and around this there was very thin gold foil gold foil. this is very thin gold foil and you know when we pass light through any a uh, transparent plastic or paper you might have observed light scatters due to the particles due to the molecules of the plastic or paper so there is the deflection in different angles so alpha rays were scattered like this alpha rays were scattered like this and this type of arrangement was obtained these are the scattered these are the scattered alpha rays scattered the scattered alpha rays now other four covered the experimental arrangement other four covered the experimental arrangement with a hard hard paper coated coated internally by zinc sulfide so they are not going to come out and the result here there is the formation of scintillations scintillations means very faint light here there is also scintillations these are the scintillations s c i n t i d l a s t i o n e s very small glow of light is there due to zinc sulfide zinc sulfide is a substance and it has a property that when individual radiations fall over the surface then it begins to glow children so you uh, use different uh, highlighters pen and you have seen when you highlight the particular letter or uh, word or sentence it starts glowing because it contains some ink it contains some ink which shines so similarly the zinc sulfide when the absorbs light it also shines the ink of the highlighters they are synthetic colors but if the zinc sulfide it is a compound it is a salt of zinc and when these rays just strike so it is coated internally coated internally by zinc sulfide and so the purpose of this experiment was to find out the real picture inside an atom so he explained that atom is a hollow ball like structure as the fourth said atom is a hollow ball like structure and in the center there is a positively charged nucleus very small portion just a house fly house fly sitting in a football ground it was the comparison made at that time by the four and so this is the central portion we call it that nucleus and large space was empty so the ford question to thompson that i have got this type of structure you are saying that 
so that's why the other ford model was failed on this ground he performed the experiment with the ford and he got this result so he was surprised and asked thompson to explain my observation so he was unable to explain and so that was the reason behind the failure of other force atomic model then he put forward uh, his own model and this own model you know it is built on a scatter experiment and the ford model is nuclear model he proposed the nuclear model of atom and there are the three points that see most of alpha rays are pass a straight line observations of other board alpha rays pass a straight line most in number few were reflected back to some larger angles and a few one in 20000 was returned back on its original path so three observations were there most travel in a straight line without any deflection a few a few suffer larger deflections and rarely one in one thousand was returned back on the path so here one in twenty thousand was returned back on the path and as a result there was the failure of the thomson's model but now whether ford said that electrons revolve around the nucleus actually it was known that that atoms are neutral it was said at that time also that atoms are neutral in nature because positive and negative charged particles they neutralize each other and so brother ford said that electrons are the negatively charged particles negatively charged particles they rotate around the nucleus so he said that electrons the negatively charged particles negatively charged particles revolve around the nucleus revolve around the nucleus revolve around the nucleus with regular emission of energy so he said that electrons revolve around the nucleus in circular path with regular emission of energy so then uh, it was it proved to be the main reason behind the failure or unsuccessfulness so children you know when ever any body when ever any body revolves around some point and continuously emit the energy so a time will come when it will become weaker and it will be attracted inside the central portion so if we have nucleus positive charge and so the electron which is radiating energy here there is the electron and so it will follow a spiral path this spiral path is followed by revolving electron and so what will happen a time will come when the electrons will be captured by the nucleus and so it can cannot be stable 
when the electrons are continuously revolving around the nucleus with regular emission of energy so a time will come when the electrons will be captured electrons will be engulfed electrons will be engulfed by the nucleus and as a result the atom cannot be stable but you know atoms are highly stable atoms are highly stable and as a result there was other point there was other point other way and that is the bohr's atomic model bohr's atomic model bohr's b bohr's model nils bohr's nils bohr so he improved the form actually children with the sequence of changes if some person has something or if for more experiment if the person is not successful then some other person do follow do some new work so bohr studied a lot so bohr simply said that everything is okay but the release of energy is not regular release of energy is not regular but the release of energy is irregular release of energy is irregular and like this is said that the release or the absorption of energy is like this this delta e delta e energy exchange energy exchange this it means release or absorb e2 energy of higher level e1 energy of lower level energy of lower level so children even then so this uh, is the bohr concept and now bohr said that the electrons are as long as present in a particular orbit or a particular cell its energy remains constant so the uh made some remarkable points and he said that the energy remains constant and so this is k l m then this n so k l m n these are called as energy levels energy levels or stationary states these are called as stationary states stationary state means the energy remains constant as long as any electron is residing or living in a particular orbit there is no change in energy its energy remains constant hence it is called as stationary states or stationary levels or energy levels and children energy he had universally followed by l followed by m followed by n so this is how the increase in energy and one more point the electrons are said to be quantized this is very important point you will see by process electrons energy is said to be quantized quantized means as long as any electron is in a particular orbit there is no change in energy and the energy is said to be quantized so electrons energy is fixed and we say 
it is quantized and so uh, this is all complete description of the three atomic models this thomson model rutherford model and bohr model and uh, uh, there are more but this uh, video is uh, basically very much important and uh, you have to revise all through